viewers and welcome back to the South Main Auto Channel. So we've got this 06 F250 here, it's got the V10, uh, came in for a little bit of a high speed shimmy we'll call it. Uh, I diagnosed it to an improperly balanced rear drive shaft, so I've got the rear drive shaft out of it currently, sent it out to get it balanced. Uh, it's all done, they said it was way out of whack and they're sending it back to me. Uh, so I won't have that till tomorrow. Uh, but in the meantime, the customer wanted me to look at a couple other things, one in which was his automatic four-wheel drive hubs. Uh, he says that you know, four-wheel drive works, which I know it does because I drove the truck in and out on the front drive shaft. Uh, but in auto mode, when you put it in four-wheel drive, so this is a regular shift on the fly transfer case, you've got you know, two high, four high, four low. Um, and then you have lockout hubs on the front, which have the option of either four-wheel drive, so locked in, or auto option. Um, so if you leave it in auto mode, supposedly they won't engage. Um, before I pulled it back in to look at that for today, um, I did verify that. You know, I just left them in auto, put it in four-wheel drive. A little bit of ratcheting sound, sounds like it comes from the right side. Uh, but that was it, no engagement. Um, you know, not wanting to cause any damage, I just got out, put it back in four-wheel drive, or locked, rather, and pulled it in. So these have uh, a pulse vacuum hub on them, or, or vacuum operated uh, front hub. So I'd have to look at the theory and operation on them to be specific. These things have been kind of a disaster since like the late 90s when they used them on the Rangers to up until today, like on the half tons, they use those integrated wheel end hub units, they call them. They're pretty cheese dog, I'll be honest with you. But fortunately, they give you the option to just get out and lock it in. And, you know, the vacuum is not the only option. But this guy told me he wants the vacuum portion of it working. So we're going to look at that. Uh, usually on these, because I know the four-wheel drive works, transfer case engages, you know, the manual hubs work, blah, blah, blah. And we get a little bit of ratcheting sound from the front. I'm assuming we just have a vacuum leak. Uh, there's a lot to these. There's the vacuum actuator under the hood there's all these plastic you know spaghetti lines that you know Ford uses uh, that become brittle you know over time uh, you know trucks 11 years old so we could be looking at one of those being broke uh, you know faulty actuator but the main cause on these or the main thing we see is a leaking knuckle area assembly so there you've got a vacuum line going to the actual steering knuckle so now you have a potential for a leak in the wheel bearing assembly, a leak in the actual lockout hub assembly, or a leak in the big giant seal that goes back there that seals you know, on the uh, uh, drive shaft, or on the axle shaft rather, by the, uh, you know, the wheel end U-joint. So there, there's a lot of potential for a leak and there's a lot of moving mechanism there. So there's, you know, with all that stuff, there's obviously a lot of failure points or potential failure points. So, uh, before we get too far into it, visual inspection can nab these quite a bit. So we're gonna take a peek. I'll show you where some of the components are under the hood. Then we'll raise it up. We'll kick it in and out of four-wheel drive. I grabbed one of the most uh, used diagnostic tool on uh, this type of job is just your standard vacuum gauge. And I grabbed us a pair of pinch-off pliers so we can isolate hub to hub, you know, if we have an issue or whatever. We'll see what's going on. Uh, if we have to, we'll look up the theory and operation as far as how they engage, disengage. Uh, if memory serves me right, they engage at a higher vacuum. Once they're engaged, I believe it releases the vacuum and then sends a pulsed vacuum to the hub periodically on a timed basis. I could be wrong on that, but I, if I remember that's how they work. And then to disengage them, they use a lower amount of vacuum. And sometimes that can take some time on these uh, to disengage. So. That's that. Let's get uh, let's get started. Enough talking about it. All right, so we'll start right here under the hood. Um, so we've got our vacuum reservoir. Uh, this is going to be our uh, uh, solenoid there that's going to control the front hubs. Uh, so you've got that there. It gets its vacuum supply uh, from the tank, which is gets its vacuum supply from the manifold, and then it also goes up, it runs some of the uh, heater controls. So it's going to run our water control valve here. Um, it's gonna loop around, go inside the cab. Yep, and run some of our HVAC unit in there. Now being that we don't have any other complaint, uh, I doubt that we have any problem here with our vacuum source. Sometimes you can unplug these. You hear them hiss. Yep, so we had vacuum at the tank. 
So like I said, I doubt we've got any kind of supply issue. Get that hook back up, make sure we don't have a supply issue. There we go. Um, these solenoids on some of the older ones were actually mounted up here on the firewall and they had a big issue with them getting wet. But um, <clears throat> like I said, being that we had some ratcheting underneath, we're gonna assume that this works. We're gonna go underneath it and just check for our vacuum at the hubs. So start right here with the hubs. Uh, previously, where these were out, that actually says lock on it right there. It's probably hard to say. And then it said auto and had an arrow. So, you know, they're in the auto mode right now and then they're quarter turn lockouts. So we would turn it to the lock position. And this would, I'm gonna light here, this would lock the front axle in, which it just did. And then we'll go back to auto. And then that should unlock us. Yep, and it did. Uh, of course, we know the hubs work because, like I say, the rear drive shaft is gone, so we drove it in on the front. Um, this is what I was talking about here. We've got our vacuum hose that goes to this knuckle, and there is a lot in here that needs a seal. Or, you know, yeah, there's a lot that needs a seal. So there's a seal behind, uh, you know, this axle shaft going into the hub, the actual wheel bearing itself, and the lockout hub itself all needs to be sealed on both sides. Uh, these uh, vacuum systems are tied together and like I say the majority of the time you can get them with visual inspection will be split or cracked at any of the joints and they come around and then this one goes up like I say it goes to this plastic spaghetti line which you know breaks very very easily and then it comes down loops around goes up here to the double donger connection we'll call it that's where they go from two to one and then it splits out and goes to the right front wheel and then up 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 and away to our solenoid so a lot of potential for failure here you know uh, leaky exhaust manifold will burn them up right here you know any of the plastic lines if anybody's ever done a brake line on it you know you've got this clip that's off down here right now yeah it clips broke um, so a lot a lot of potential for failure in the system to be honest with you uh, like I said, I've got our pliers yank the hoses off, got us a set of pinch pliers, and I've got the vacuum gauge. Uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to pull the vacuum lines off one of these hubs, one side or the other. Uh, it doesn't really matter. And then Miss Hannah is in the cab, and we're going to start it up, put it in and out of uh, two and four-wheel drive, and see what kind of vacuum signal we have down here. So I pulled the hose off the passenger side here. And hook our vacuum gauge in there. This thing got barb on it, man. This thing gets jammed up in the vacuum hoses. Can you guys see? You can't see anything because this light's ridiculous. Uh, we uh, get this set. All right, Hannah, go ahead and start it up. I right, go ahead and put it in. Uh, you're in two wheel drive right now? Okay, put it in four wheel drive. We can see it pulled just a little bit of vacuum right there. Like, I don't know, two inches or something. Okay, put it in two wheel. Okay, the vacuum stayed low. That's two wheel drive, Hannah? Okay. I'll tell you what, put it in four. Alright, guys, I'm gonna take. Take a pair of pliers here. I'm gonna squeeze the other hub. I'll get this propped up. Oh, whoa! Get that somewhere where you guys can see it here. Stay. There we go. Now you guys can see it. Okay, put it back in two-wheel drive, Hannah. Yeah, you can see it halted for two-wheel drive going back in. Okay, I'm going to squeeze the other vacuum hose on the passenger side. Okay, put it in four-wheel drive. Okay, I'm going to squeeze it. Oh, yeah, look at that. So that shot right down. Manifold vacuum, it's climbing. All right, now that's going to hold, if I remember correctly, that'll hold. You guys can't see crap. I got wedged in there. Uh, so that's holding about 20 inches. Okay, put it in two wheel. Alright, that did not vent. That's interesting. That's 
two wheel drive, Hannah? Okay. Okay, um, shut the truck off. Oh, shoot, we just missed the, uh, we just missed the pulsing event right there when she shut the truck off. Um, because if I remember right, I think when you put these in two wheel drive, they do take a little bit of time, uh, to go into the, the reduced vacuum mode. Sometimes I think up to a couple minutes. Um, I tell you what, so I've got the right side kinked off right now, or the left driver's side, so obviously our problem's in the driver's side hub area. Uh, so we're going to start it back up. I don't know if you guys can hear me on the truck show. We're going to start it back up. We're going to put it in four-wheel drive. It's going to pull a higher vacuum, and then we're going to put it in two-wheel drive, and we're going to wait to see what that does, if that does put it into a reduced uh, lower vacuum to disengage that hub. Uh, go ahead and start it, Hannah, in two-wheel drive. Okay, put it in four. All right, we see it pulled a high vacuum. Okay, put it in two. All right, you're in two-wheel drive. Okay, now we're just gonna let it sit here for a minute or so. We'll see if that uh, solenoid opens. I don't know what its criteria is, if it needs to see any uh, any uh, wheel speed or anything like that, that we may have to go look into if we don't see this drop. That clock for about 30 seconds. But that solenoid should have the ability to vent itself. There it goes. Now let's see if it pulses it. I don't know if it's gonna, yep, there it goes. So it pulses it at six inches of vacuum. So. Theoretically, if we had the hub hooked up, it would be disengaging the hub. And then I think what it's gonna do is it's uh, after a little while here, that'll put that back to zero. Yeah, so technically, like I said, if things are hooked up, our hub would have just disengaged. So we know electronically everything is working, our vacuum's all working. And I can't remember on a time basis if this continually pulses, you know, at a periodic time basis, but we've seen it work, so we're happy with that. Okay, you shut off, Hannah. Ugh, get my gauge back. What the thunder? Ugh, crap. There we go. All right, so we've seen that. We've seen what happened. So it appears that full manifold vacuum or thereabouts is what it takes to engage the hub. And then a periodic, a certain amount of time after we shut the uh, four-wheel drive off, that's when we get that reduced vacuum, the six inches or whatever, to disengage the hub. It just takes a little bit of time. We didn't catch it the first time there because I had her shut the car off. Okay, so now we've got a scoop over here and I had the hose pinched off right here. You can see where I was pinching it with my pliers. So that isolates a lot. That means our leak is from here to here and in this knuckle somewhere. Uh, easiest way to find that is with a smoke machine because then we can see where the vacuum leak is instead of guess. Let's see, we've got our smoke machine. Wait for the smoke to roll. And I've got a little piece of vacuum hose. So we're just gonna unhook it from this hub. There. Yeah, we've got smoke rolling. See where it's coming from, probably everywhere. But the biggest failure point is this inner hub seal, which it's belching out of right now. We'll look at the outer hub, which looks pretty, but pretty dry to me. It can be dry. Let's see here. Get you guys around where you can see this. Well, that, my friends, is the inner hub seal. I'll spin the. Uh, front shaft here so you can see that it's just bellowing out around there so this is a great big seal that goes in there and then the uh, front axle is retained into the wheel bearing with just like a snap ring and a washer so there's a little bit of play in these uh, there is a center support bearing in the actual wheel bearing on this uh, and you know there's a big o-ring that goes around the wheel bearing too as it goes in and often if those are leaking we'll see a source of smoke you know coming out from up front here but being that this seal is puking so bad, uh, I'm gonna assume it's that, or we're not gonna assume we know it's that. 
we don't see anything coming out around you know the lockout hub itself you hold that light in we'll switch it in and out here just to see so they can leak around here they can leak around the outer seal you know which we don't have don't appear to have it looks like the majority of our problem is in there so I guess that's a that's pretty cool I'm not gonna lie it's kind of fun I love the smoke machine all right guys so that's that uh, pretty pretty quick diagnosis on this one um, <clears throat> you know what somebody's already saying that I could get burned on this we know that hub's leaking we don't know that hub's not leaking I almost made a huge mistake We've got to stick the vacuum gauge back on this side. That was a, that was a straight up foolish mistake and an assumption. Um, yeah, wow, what a rookie. So we've got to throw <laughs> big dummy. That would be something. They tell your customer, ah, it's going to be three hundred bucks, and find out it's double that because that one's leaking too. Uh, we need to throw the vacuum gauge on this side, quick like a little bunny. Wow, I can't believe I just did. That. Glad I was making a video. I just literally just made my heart race. I hate making mistakes. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna pull the vacuum hose off this side and just double check to make sure that hub works. I assumed it was because I heard one of them clicking. So we just screwed up, Hannah. Live. Ah. Because I only checked one side. That side could be leaking just as bad. We made an assumption. You know what happens when you assume? Mm -hmm. So yeah, so you're gonna have to get back up in the truck. Uh, turn, just turn the key on here. I just want to do this one from down here. Uh, turn the wheels all the way left. All right, that's good. So we're gonna unhook this side. Wow, what a that would have been awful. Okay, it's in park. Yeah. Two-wheel drive. Yeah. Okay, go ahead and start it. Okay, put it in four-wheel drive. There we go. We can see it applying vacuum. Almost a manifold vacuum at this point. Yeah, about uh, 18 inches or so. Okay, wow. Woo! Okay, put it in two-wheel drive. Now we'll have to wait again another you know minute or so, whatever it is that thing takes to kick back into two-wheel where it holds uh what to do, it drops it to zero, then it pulls it to six inches, I think it was, right? Yeah. At least we got lucky. Time, right? Oh, there it goes. So it just bled the vacuum off there. And there it goes. It just reapplied it to six inches, six, six and a half, something like that. So it's duty cycle controlling the solenoid under the uh, hood to achieve that vacuum. And uh, what this proves, this proves that our right side hub is sealed, thankfully, and it just released it again. Okay, you can shut off, Hannah. Do you know how bad somebody would have called me out on that, Anna? Or how bad it would have sucked if we fixed this side and didn't test the other side? Oh man. Wow, amateur hour. Now we can uh, close this segment. I can't believe I just did that. But anyhow, that's why we do, uh, you know, double check ourselves, right? Uh, so anyhow, thankfully, the right side hub works. Uh, it's sealed, it holds vacuum. Um, if it has a leak, it's able to, you know, overcome the leak with engine vacuum. Uh, but yes, check both hubs. I don't, I don't know what I was thinking. It's almost the end of the day. Five minutes of five. You gotta get out of here. Uh, so before I leave, I'm gonna order that inner seal. I've, I've probably already said this. Gonna order the inner seal, but I'm also gonna order a wheel bearing just in case. Uh, that axle shaft has a bit of movement in it. Like I say, not too uncommon. But I don't want to tear it apart and find out that that inner bearing is bad, or you know, the hub. You know, I mean, it's New York, baby. Uh, you know, this wheel bearing could be in a million pieces by the time we get it off. Um, we're gonna get that. I see he's got a little uh, axle shaft dust seal there that's pretty whipped. Uh, the U-joint itself feels good. Uh, so we'll probably change that dust seal while we got it out too. Uh, check his ball joints, make sure it's not gonna need anything else. Cause if you're tearing it down that far, then just, you know, fix what it needs and be good with it. So we'll get that stuff, whether I tear it apart myself screw in his tread uh, or Josh tears it apart I'll either record the process or 
I'll get it to our part so we can see and show you guys what it is. Uh, there is a special tool that's required to put that inner hub seal in. Uh, I got these, I got a couple different ones uh, for doing these. They're really expensive and they're just these giant seal drivers that install the seal on the uh, axle shaft and then you, then you take the tool and you install the whole thing in and it sets the depth for you. Uh, they're wicked expensive and they only fit these and but you know I bought them and I loan them out to other shops in the area that need them you know if they need them so that's that we'll see what happens all right guys so we started uh, taking this apart so here's the lockout hub uh, this was uh, as I mentioned previously um, this is one of the failure points you got the o-ring here on the hub so this has to seal and you know the internal mechanisms of the hub itself also have to seal so that's important uh, we're just getting ready to pull the uh, Josh tore everything apart here. We're getting ready to pull the hub assembly off. I told my co to help him. We bust it out. Uh, when we let it sit overnight, we sprayed it all down with some croil, let it sit, and I had some work to do this morning. Uh, just whacked on the side of it here with the air hammer, and it actually broke loose. Um, so we're going to slide it off here. We'll have a look at what we find. So here's the other portion that can leak that I mentioned is there's an o-ring that goes around this wheel bearing it's usually yellow set this to the side so you can see this o-ring has to seal uh, so that's you know another potential for a failure which we know is good this is the uh, bearing for the that pilots the shaft our axle shaft there and the seal that we have leaking is in there I got time to show you. We're pretty busy this morning. Hang on. Let me just set this to the side. Right, so we'll set that to the side. Uh, it's a freaking madhouse. Let me show you what uh, what the seal looks like. So here's the inner seal that runs on the axle shaft, as you can see, and we can see that the seal is probably pretty well nuked. Um, if the U-joint starts to seize up, puts a lot of side pressure on these, you know, that pilot bearing starts to go bad in the bear wheel bearing, you know, that puts a lot of pressure. And inherently, these are just designed to fail anyways, uh, because it's not an oil bath of any sort. Um, you know, you start getting grit, grit from the backside, the seal just wears out. Uh, so we got a new seal here. Uh, they're very expensive. You can see what the seal looks like. They uh, you know, they rotate inside themselves. We've got to install it onto the axle and then push the whole axle assembly in uh, with a special tool, which I think I have. I'm hoping I have. I got a couple different ones for these Fords. Um, it's a very, very poor design and has a lot of potential for failure. So that's what that looks like. We'll take and uh, pop that out of there. Um, you want to get us the, the big bar, Josh? So get yourself a little, uh, little screwdriver sometimes these come out wicked hard there we go but when you use a six foot screwdriver they pop right out usually so we'll pop that out a little bit of, a little bit of fishing line on there and that's the seal and we can see that it's completely shot so uh, but you you joints good on this um, no sense in changing that. So people are going to scream, you know, why don't you change it? But don't fix it or if it ain't broke, you know. Um, we do have the new inner seal here. They've got a new designed dust seal that goes there. I'm not a huge fan of them, but uh, we'll put that in. And we'll get the seal swapped out. So we'll take this. <clears throat> the old junk seal like I say it's inevitable it's gonna fail uh, unless you don't drive the truck then they won't this inner seal here a lot of people this is just a dust seal that goes in and keeps crap from going down the axle tube 
a lot of people don't put those back on, I'll be honest with you. And this is just a little support to help you line the axle up into the splines, you know, when you stick it through. So again, not 100% necessary. So I'm going to take I'll just wire wheel this, get this cleaned up, and then we'll get the tool, install our new seal, and everybody will be happy again. Sure this is clean and rust free basically. Look that little guy there. Then you gotta have this big jabroni. Uh, this is, uh, I got this one from OTC. That's the uh, part number on that. There are several different ones. Then you gotta buy the handle separate, which is stupid because if I remember right, I, I think this is probably like a $300 setup. And this is all it does. that and then you have to use the tool to set the whole thing into the steering duct. So that's that once it's installed. Like I say, it's, I mean super super cheesy design. Very failure prone. So be careful that seal. I think that seal is probably like 60 bucks, something like that. But uh, yeah, all right. So there is the new style inner uh, tube seal. Uh, these things are also a disaster. Um, you have to clean out, you have to make sure you clean out the axle tube really, really good here. And then you have to drive these in. They're, they're kind of a press fit, but only on this really, really thin edge right here. Um, yeah, let me show you where, yeah, on this little thin edge right here. And then the seal, you know, spins inside of itself. So it's only gonna last for, you know, I don't know, a few months before it's toast. Uh, but that's the that's the new style and I take and I put a um, I just put regular uh, wheel bearing grease on it because where the axle shaft slips through here I mean they're they're pretty uh, pretty springy malleable is that, is that the right word um, but uh, they do push in relatively hard because it's got to slip up past you know it past the splines all the way up in this vicinity somewheres and the rubber all that does is grip onto the axle shaft and it spins you know essentially spins inside of itself you know the rubber uh, here will this inner portion spins in this seal I don't know it's probably hard to represent right there but you know what I'm saying so it's not like the axle shaft spins in here it's just got to slip through there uh, the other thing is you got to clean the hub up good there don't get in here with a grinder or anything because there is a little step right here you got to keep that step so and then we uh, you know grease it up with some bearing grease so hopefully this whole assembly will go in easy uh, a couple things to line up. You got to get this lined up. We've got to line this up, and we've also got to line it up inside the differential where it goes in the splines, all at the same time, baby. All right. <clears throat> ding dong, ding dong. Off oh, freaking morning. Here we go. So we'll try to get that in. Like I say, that thing is heat these inner seals. <laughs> Try to pull it back out, ruin them. I love forward, baby. So what we want to do? Okay, so it engaged in the splines. Okay, so your seal's going to go in until it hits that step. We're engaged in the splines right now, and then this is where you have to have this tool because this is what sets the depth. This little guy right here, get her in that far, and give her beans. And that is that. So that's our new seal installed. We'll just wipe off the extra excess grease because we don't want to promote any uh, you know dirt and dust and crap from sticking 
right in the way, so we'll just kind of wipe that out. This, you know, obviously this is completely sealed. This is the vacuum cha chamber portion um, of the hub. That's where the vacuum comes in. Should have the uh, little hole up here. So the little hole's right there, so that has grease in it. So what we'll do, um, but you can't see it, how can we represent this? What do we got kicking around here? And you know, we got a screwdriver with a busted tip. So you can see that hole right up in there. Yeah, right there. So we'll blow the junk out of that hole. Make sure that's good. Because you don't want any junk in your hole, baby. And then um, we'll finish putting this thing together. And you can see the new inner seal there. Kind of how that works. So, like I say, that won't last long. Those, seal, those seals won't last in four wheel drive. You know, if the hubs are locked in, that seal won't last three months. But there's nothing you can do. You get it from Ford. Uh, it's the same thing, you know, same exact seal. Um, like I say, it's not 100% necessary anyways. Trucks didn't have those for many, many years with a, uh, you know, mono beam front end. So, whatever, dude. Um, what else can I tell you about this? Oh, here's the, uh, here's the snap ring. So the snap ring, once you put your wheel bearing back on, you know, your snap ring just goes on this portion of the axle shaft and that's it. So. I'll have Josh show this thing back together. He's cleaning up the wheel bearing and stuff now. We'll put the, you know, the new O-ring on that and everything should be good to go. All right, guys, so we're out here on a test drive. I'm just running out of time today. I would love to show this process. So right now we're in two-wheel drive. I just pulled off the shoulder. We should be able to spin out a little. Oh, yeah. She's just slinging some side back there. So we'll, uh, I just had to take it on drive, make sure our uh, uh, vibration that we had in that drive shaft I mentioned was gone unfortunately you get about 60 and there's still just a real real slight amount but the uh, guy at the drive shaft shop told me he had a heck of a time balancing that and he's got a ton of weight on it uh, he recommended replacing the shaft uh, so I got to talk that over with the customer I mean it, it's a thousand times better than it was but uh, definitely not uh, perfect so we'll take and uh, we got to shift on the fly so I'll pop it in four wheel drive here all right, so the four-wheel drive light just turned on. Technically, when I turn into town here, I'll cut tight. If, if the front hubs are locked in, it should start crow hopping on us. So I'll turn right tight here. Oh yeah, she bounced right up. Oh yeah. So that definitely went in four-wheel drive. We'll, uh, we'll pull down here where she's a little bit slick. shots here. Oh yeah. So she takes right off. I'll turn around. So you can feel it. You can feel it crow hopping. Knuckling real hard. So I'll take it back back up. Let's see. Alright, so we're definitely in four wheel. We'll slap her in two wheel here. hubs to disengage remember it takes you know a certain amount of time for that to happen so let's see yep so we're back in two wheel throwing four wheel away from the lock in oh yeah so she's biting right up now brings us right to a stop whoa you guys are tipping over hubs are now sealed and working and he doesn't have to get out to lock it in so that was the objective maybe all right guys that's it I got to roll uh, got a million things happening today like I said I wish I could have filmed this whole process but I think you know you probably understand um, I'm not sure if that can be done without the uh, without the special tool just because, you know, like I say, it does set the depth of the seal, which, you know, people might think it's not, you know, too important, but it is when you go to put the axle in and get the snap ring back on. It's got to be, you know, just so. The tools are wicked expensive. It sucks. Um, like I say, I've got about, I think, three different ones for these Fords, and unfortunately, that's all you use them on, but you kind of got to have them. We live in four-wheel drive country, so uh, they'll probably never pay for themselves, but, you know. 
don't want to lose a job either uh, on account of it. But like I said, I load them out to other shops that are around. So maybe you can find a shop that has one of those tools. Um, that's it. I uh, want more to say. Except check us out on Google Plus, Facebook. If you haven't done that, subscribe to our channel uh, if you want to stay up to date with all the all the circus that happens here. So, all right, guys. Thanks for watching.